Hey, you're watching Squidmore Miniatures, and I am Emil. And today, I've got a guest. Hey, uh, I'm Roman, and today I'm gonna tell you the six tips how to be a better painter. So two weeks ago, I was at this weekend workshop with one of the hands-down world's greatest miniature painters, Roman Gruba. And I say that 100% subjectively. Uh, Roman Gruba is a fantastic painter. Some of his pieces are just... And Roman is this fantastic character and eccentric person that just has so much passion for painting. And I just thought that I had to grasp this opportunity to have him give us a few tips of how you can improve and things you need to think about to kind of take your painting to the next level. And it's always refreshing to get this new view from a another great painter and see how he thinks about painting approaches his miniatures. And I really had this experience during the workshop. Uh, we painted for like 22 hours in two days and started the Saturday with a bust and painted this bust for 11 hours or something. And it's so nice to get instant feedback from someone with fresh eyes looking at your pieces that you paint and give you new knowledge that you didn't think about before when you're in your sort of safe zone. And you can see here the pieces that I started painting during the weekend. This is what we managed to do in the two days and I'm just super happy with what I got from it. So with that I think it's time to let Roman give us his tips and I'm going to jump in between some of these questions to kind of uh, give you my experience from what he said and how I could apply this directly after his workshop to my painting. So see you later. Checking your miniatures under the different types of light. So you need to check your miniature when you're painting it under the different light. It will help you really much because uh, you paint in miniature with a specific light situation. Like for example, if you paint in your miniature under the normal zenithal light and you will put it under the lamp, under the normal lamp with kind of vertical light, you will see that your effect of your light situation of the zenithal light would be kind of doubled because you will have the light when you have painted the light and you will have a deeper shadow where you painted the shadow. So sometimes you need to t take a look at the different types of light, especially when you have a different light situation on your miniature. So check your miniatures in a different light and a focused light, a dispersed light, light from a, from a sun on a, on the street, whatever. I mean, it will help you really much to see the problems you have already made to see if it's good enough or not. So during the workshop, this was an incredibly important part of Roma's way of painting. Uh, every time he came up to someone and asked to look at their miniature to give them feedback, he took it away from the, the light where you were painting and started looking at it in the hallway and went to different light sources in the corners of the room to see if your eyes would be led to places that they wouldn't be and if the contrast was high enough. And, and he really put a lot of focus into this. As I said, every time he checked someone's paint job, he checked it in different types of light to see exactly how the miniature was painted not always under the perfect painting light. I am really going to bring this into my painting habits and I think you should too. Give yourself a small challenge for every project you paint. So what I want to say here uh, if you want to progress from time to time you need to give yourself at least small challenges with every miniature you're painting because you don't need to make uh, really big ones with every project with every miniature but from time to time you can give yourself goals like this time i will try to make really nice free hands this time i will try to make really small details or a textures or a different type of uh, enlightenment or osl this thing will just help you really much to improve to try different things i've talked about this topic a lot of times before and especially in the paint bravely video uh, that i did a few weeks back 
And I think that this is a super important thing. Give yourself small challenges, uh, try to develop new techniques and try new techniques. In the end, you might not end up liking them, but you learn something along the way. And this is going to take you to the next level as a painter incredibly fast. Uh, painting in small details. So when you paint in a small details, I'm seeing sometimes people have a problems, like when you paint in the eyes. If your eyes working pretty well, what you need to do when you paint in a small miniatures is to make as short moves as possible. Like sometimes I'm seeing people painting the eyes like this. On a big on a big distance and it won't work pretty well because your hand need to make a good move pretty big one and your hands not really steady instead of doing it like this what I'm actually doing and try to hold my hands together pretty steady I'm trying to be as steady as possible even with the fingers on my palms and then what I'm doing I'm taking my figure pretty close to my eyes to see everything and I'm trying to make as short moves as I can to make lines and dots really clear and good. I think a lot of people take this topic as sort of a no-brainer but to be honest I think this is something also that you need to actively think about. If your sight is good as Roman said just move the miniature closer and do these tiny tiny deliberate strokes instead of doing these large grand ones. I think especially in the later process of the painting when your miniature is almost done and you want to add these highlights and speckles and painting eyes for example, be a bit more specific with your brush strokes and be very careful to make them look incredibly good. Create your own interpretation of a miniature. What I'm trying to say here, if you want to make really interesting figure, interesting project for a viewer, it would be much better to make your figure unique, to make your bust unique. For some time I prefer to leave my my figures, my projects on my shelves to think about it, to think what can happen with this character. Really nice to create some story, to create some unique idea. Sometimes you taking a look at the figures and you seeing figures being painted in more or less the same ways. The first one is interesting, second one is interesting, but when you have the 10 painted more or less in the same way, it won't be really interesting anymore. To make it better is to create create your kind of own idea. Sometimes it could be really fun, sometimes it could be kind of sounds crazy, but it's much better than to make just a normal, regular painting. I talked with Roman a bit about this topic after we recorded his part for this video. Making your own interpretation doesn't have to be making the grandest thing. When you first start painting, I think it's a good idea to copy other people and try to imitate their paint jobs. And I have done this a lot throughout my days just to learn and to try out new things and see what works for me. But once you've started getting a bit more comfortable in your painting journey, just trying out different stuff. Like for example, he mentioned doing a different base than maybe what other people have done with this miniature. And if you're painting a miniature that has a lot of skin, maybe try painting some darker skin or painting someone who is sun tanned or someone who's out in the cold and adding some blues to the highlight. It doesn't have to be always like big grand things like these epic free hands that Roman can do but do small things just to make your piece a little bit different than from what other people do. And now about developing your own style. When you're beginning your painting, it's nice to begin with copying styles, uh, different methods like this, but at some point you need to understand what do you like in this painting. Uh, stick up to the ideas you like and you need to develop the style, your own style, at least with a little bit of your own touch. Most of the time it won't be a good idea to just replicate somebody. You need to have really unique style. You need to create something some style that will just uh, will make a click in a, in a head of a viewer and the viewer will understand that this figure was painted by you it's really important i think 
This topic almost requires its own video and I'm probably gonna make one in the future about it. But developing your own style means that you have to draw inspiration from many different places. Maybe you love a specific painter and everything that he does, but don't copy that exactly from him. You can take parts of it from that person and maybe take the basing from another person that you love and maybe take spot highlights from a third person or maybe take colors from your neighborhood. If you take things that are close to your heart and combine them, it could be 10 things, it could be two different things, but once you start adding these different things that you are comfortable with and that you enjoy and that you like, that you find visually strong, these things together will add up and make your own style. So when developing your own style as a beginner painter, just remember to not take everything from the same piece, but take things from many different styles and you will find that you find your style faster. Uh, learn the basics and understand what you're doing with your miniatures. Uh, you need to understand how actually things is working. I think it's pretty important in this painting to understand why you're painting like this, why these methods are working, why these methods not really working, even from mixing the colors to actually how the things working in the real life. What's happening with light, why you can see their re reflection, why you paint in texture like this, how this material will be fold, why the texture of the skin will go in the such a way. It's really interesting that the part of our hobby could be about observing the real world. It will help really much to your painting. And it's really good to understand how the things working in real life, to understand sometimes physics, sometimes even kind of biology. And it's really good to ask yourself a questions. I mean, sometimes you can be quite talented and you can do the things which will work pretty good. But sometimes you want to understand why. And it's a good thing to ask yourself a questions. Why these things uh, working and why other things not working really well. It's a good way to understand uh, and to go a little bit deeper in this miniature painting, like in any things you are doing in your life. This is another one of those basics that Roman and I talked about a bit after we recorded his video parts. Learning your tools and learning how things work is incredibly important. It could be something as simple as learning how glue works or why plastic glue is different from super glue. And learning how inks works or how your colors work or color composition works. Just learning all of these different things so you can learn when to apply them and how to apply them into your miniature works. And sometimes breaking these rules is going to be what makes your piece interesting. But learning them and knowing how they work is incredibly important to make you a better painter and to make you understand what makes something look good and what you did look good. Share this video with a friend and maybe hit the like button if you enjoyed it that much. Leave a comment and tell me what you want to know more about. If you ever wondered what gear I use and what tools I have and what paints I use, squidmore.com. On that website you can find all of these things and I also added my Amazon Associates links there so if you're interested in buying any one of these things you can just follow these links and I will be getting a kickback and it doesn't cost you a dime. A massive shout out once again to everyone who decided to support this channel on Patreon. You are the sole main reason that I already this soon into my YouTube career can spend a few days every week recording these videos for you and sharing my hobby knowledge to the world. With that said guys, have a great day. Bye.